Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today. I have my VIP guest, Kathy. Um, she's joining me today basically to share her story. And I asked her to come in and be able to share her story with you guys in the group and on our channel, um, mostly because I think, you know, because I'm a show jumper and a lot of people, they come to me and they're like, oh, you're too hardcore, you know, like you're too competitive or you're too this or you're too that. And so I really wanted Kathy, you to jump on and share your story because I think you're very inspirational, even though, you know, you've only been kind of in the program, I think for like a month or so. And yeah, so I'll let you go ahead and jump on just maybe quick introduction of yourself, where you are, and, and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'm Kathy. I'm sure that Crystal will tell you later on. I'm 65. And a lot of people where I live think I'm a little nuts to be writing very young Arabians at my age and to be even doing anything, but um, this is my bucket list. And uh, I'm a cancer survivor, stage four cancer survivor. And it's one of the things that I just wanted to do. And it's been really exciting to find this program. I combined it with other programs, as I told you in my story. Um, I've combined it with people who do a lot of natural horsemanship things, which is took me to listening to the horse. That's actually where I started. And then I saw the advertisements for sticky butt and then the VIP. And, um, I really wanted to be that person who took that next step, who had the great master coach. And so I contacted crystal, the sticky butt was interesting to me, but it was really more about finding that person who can help elevate you that I wanted to do. So I first contacted you after I did listening to the horse um, about the VIP thing and we talked and it's just been magic. Yeah, great. So for those of you who are maybe new, um, obviously I have a couple of online courses. The speaking of the horse language is what she was talking about is more groundwork and natural horsemanship. And then the sticky butt is kind of the uh, rider balance training, let's say. And so you've been kind of going through some of the sticky butt modules recently. And, you know, when you first came to me and I mean, your story really struck me because you came to me and you said, you know, you hadn't cantered in a couple of years and that you were having some confidence issues and that your horses, you know, you love your Arabian horses. You really want to show them off, but that they felt too, too good for you in a way. So maybe share a little bit about the frustrations that you were experiencing when you came to me. So, um, both my horses are fairly young for, for horses. Um, when I got them, so I got my mare, she was a yearling, so I couldn't even ride her for a couple of years. I, but I fell in love with her because she was so beautiful. And then I got a gelding that I could ride in the meantime. And then I found out I couldn't ride him because he had had issues. He had fallen apart. Um, he'd been put in the, I think, I believe he was shown too early and he had, um, he just fell apart. He had confidence issues. He had other, I think he'd been treated bad. And so I, I knew that I couldn't handle my horses. Um, my mare, they were both, she was beautiful. Monty was a little bit mean. He wouldn't let me saddle him. He wouldn't let me bridle him. He wouldn't let me, he wouldn't let the, anybody uh, do, do anything that he decided he didn't want to have done. So one day he might be really nice and the next day he would kick people and really bad. And he hurt my farrier and I became a, a little bit, I wasn't afraid of him, but a little bit afraid of him. I definitely was afraid of what he could do, um, which is hurt somebody. So Patty was sent off to be started because I didn't feel like I wanted to start a horse and I found some wonderful people to do it in New Mexico. And then I got, I sent Monty over there too, because I love what they were doing with her. And I kind of thought I was going to, this is kind of scary. I thought I was going to put him down because he was so dangerous. He was hurting people. And I won't pass on a dangerous horse to someone else. That's that's not who I am. And even when you pay good money for horses, I think you have to make decisions that are good for the horse and for you and for other people. So um, when I, I, after I sent them there, I decided to take some classes and to, to try to figure out, I've never taken horse riding classes in my life. I just, got on horses and rode because when I was a kid, that's what I did. But then I waited 40 years or 30 years and didn't ride. So I said, wow, I've got these beautiful horses. They're going to be able to do great things, but can you do great things? Can you be worthy of those horses? And, 
can you ride them the way that they deserve to be ridden so that they can be the wonderful horses that they are. So I started taking some Western classes because that's kind of what I thought I was going to do. That's what I knew. Um, and I had a really good trainer. He had been working with me on with Monty on on doing ground stuff, which I still all the basic things he taught me are I wrote in a notebook and I still use those. There's they, he was a wonderful trainer, but he passed me to somebody else and I wasn't getting anywhere. So I was afraid to pick up my horses. I left him there an extra six months because I wasn't ready to to pick up my horses. But then I I realized I can't just leave them at the trainers, you know, five hours away. I gotta bring them home, and and I've gotta either learn to ride them or or not. And I brought them home, and my na and I started doing the groundwork that that my trainers asked me to do with Warwick Schiller. And I I know that's somebody other than you, a different trainer. But he trains the horses and does the groundwork and does that connection with the horses. He doesn't train riders. He trains you yeah, natural horsemanship. You with your yeah. horse. I've had the chance to speak with Warwick for our for our um, virtual clinic that we did. I, I saw that and I was really excited because those are all the people that I love, right? Yeah. So <laughs> the, I have been gravitating to people who are treating their horses the same way that I want to treat my horses, and it's different. It's a different way than I was raised. I don't have to win with mm -hmm. my horse. I don't have to make them do something and yeah. in order to feel like uh, that they didn't win, right? Because somebody yeah. said, well, don't let them win. That's how I was raised. Don't let the horse win. You got to force them. That's not how I want to be with my animals. And yeah. I've evolved to this stage. And so when you came to me, you know, you were very like, I'm good with the groundwork stuff. You and your horse, you were yeah. having a relationship. Obviously, you had some very good groundwork stuff. I saw videos of you, obviously, when you sent them to me, when you joined the VIP inner circle. Um, so you're like, yeah, I have the relationship on the ground. It's just not carrying over in the saddle. And as, as I mentioned, like you said, that you were scared to canter. You were scared of his extended yes. trot. You know, you had a lot of fears. And I, I think you guys won't notice on the call now, but when I spoke to you not even that long ago, it's like I was talking to a different person. You were so defeated. You were so frustrated. Um, I felt from you like, like you were on the verge of giving up. I don't know what you feel. I but. was. I found that. So that's why I was at the point of my story. I found this trainer. My neighbor told me, try dressage. And I thought, okay. Because I couldn't, one thing, I couldn't find people to go out on the trail ride with me. My horses could both trail ride. And I could, and I don't want to put down Western pleasure or trail riding to anybody, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it, that was not hard for me. I didn't need to canter to hack on the trails. Yeah. I could trot I, and I could trot and I could ride. And I was afraid of the canter and, and I could keep them at a slow trot. But when I tried dressage, I loved it. I absolutely loved all the thought. And then I learned more and more about dressage, about how good it is for the horse for his well-being and my horses were so beautiful from the very beginning my horses were so beautiful in the dressage movements that it's just uh, and i thought this is what i'd like to do but in order to do dressage i had to canter i have to canter i did the first two tests right and in test three you have to canter i can't canter so um, we did, we did very, we, I mean, our f very first test, we got like a 61 and which was pretty good, you know, considering, um, that we, neither one of us knew what we were doing. We'd only had four lessons, you know, we just went and did it. And so, but I can't, I, I said, okay. And so my trainer that I had nice lady, really nice lady, but she also didn't deal with the fact that I can't hear very well. So when you're in a big dressage arena and they're in the middle of the arena and they're yelling at you and as windy as it is, like where you are right now, I can hear the wind. And that's how it is here all the time. I, I, I couldn't hear her. And then I got frustrated and I didn't know what I was doing with the horse and I, I couldn't hear her. And then she got mad, uh, frustrated, not mad, that I wasn't doing what she said. And then, and, and then she told me to canter. And we tried it a couple of different lessons and I, I couldn't scoop right or I couldn't, whatever I had to do, whatever cue I wasn't doing right. And then she made me feel, so she made me feel really bad. She made me feel like, and I, and it was my fault. My, my horse can do what I want him to do. It was my fault, but I didn't need to be made feel guilty 
or like I'm never going to be able to do it. And, and then when she says, yeah, you're doing this, that doesn't help me. She says, you're doing this with your hand. I said, no, I'm pretty sure I was sitting here and I wasn't doing this with my hands. I might have been, you know, like pulling with the reins. But when she's and I and I I'm 65. So when this young lady was trying to tell me things, I guess I don't take it that well. We had a little bit of a blow up and I don't want to be that way. I don't want to have where I'm upset. And then I um, where I'm upset with the trainer and I feel belittled and then I feel like I can't do it. I felt like then I couldn't do it. So never, no matter how many times I tried to canter before I went into it. And, I, and I've read so much. I read so many books about horses and the, that if my mindset says you can't do it, you're not going to do it. Yeah. So I, I was going into it like I can't do it. And, I, and, and so I just, I quit lessons. And I searched and that's when I went back to the VIP. You were really, it was just fortuitous. You were putting out your ads for it. And I, I, since I was taking a class, I was getting the ads on Facebook and I said, okay, let me just talk to Crystal. I don't know if I'll do this, but I want to talk to it and see. And I, and I wasn't really sure to be honest with you about the virtual thing. I thought I need a, a teacher here. I need someone who's right there who can yell at me. Right. I really didn't want someone who could yell at me, but I but thought I, just, I needed But I just person. say too, when I swapped to virtual, I had this same thought because I've been coaching my whole life in person. You know, people were literally flying me halfway around the world to train them. You know, so for me, it was like, yeah, great. Book my, you know, $4,000 round trip flight ticket and I'll come. So I also used to think this virtual thing, like that's not going to work with horses. So no, I, I hear you there. <laughs> so I, I was like, uh, I don't know, you know, if I can't do it with somebody yelling at me right in, right there, how how is how can will the virtual thing work? But we talked, and yes, I was defeated, and and I still so I'm I'm now getting to week three in the sticky butt slow. So I'm I'm week six, but I'm at week three because I'm going slow. But um, that's just how I like to roll with things because I'm not, I don't want to get hurt. I'm, I don't feel like I, I could heal that well. So I'm just going slow and we're doing marvelous. I absolutely love it. But, um, it's the canter in the audibles. Okay. So, and so I've, I've got this, you know, I'm still a little bit nervous about it, but it's so funny because. There you are. I lost you. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so you're, the, you're saying about the audibles and the canter. Right. So so um so there's so much parts to there are so many pieces to the VIP. And that's also another wonderful thing because there are just so many things that you can use to help yourself get better. And um but I wanted to go back to the first time that I submitted a video. And so that's the hardest part of everything in this, of everything in the course. The hardest part is videoing yourself. And especially after the first time, because you know, everybody's going to see it, you know, and that's okay. It's okay because it's so funny because I learn from, from all the critiques you give the other people. I'm like, oh, I'm doing that too. Right. So, so it's, it's actually really wonderful, but it takes a little bit to say, oh, okay, I'm going to video myself and it's there for posterity. And you're going to be able to see that I was always had, I was always like leaning forward in the trot. And I, <laughs> and so the, the hardest part is probably setting up the video, which like, like last week, I here I, we had a wonderful session. I was so excited to send it to Crystal. I went over to my camera and my camera had overheated because it was over a hundred degrees and it only did the first seven minutes, which was kind of the warm up and not the the lesson. So there are some challenges to the video part, but that is actually the coolest thing. So that's the part where I said I, I wasn't sure was I really gonna learn how was the instructor gonna be able to tell me things from the virtual but the app that you use and the way that you like on, on the one when you zoomed in and you said oh wow one stirrup is longer than the other i didn't even know that and that was causing problems for me just with that i mean and 
And the fact that you could see that in the video and you showed that this stirrup was- Yeah, I could draw the little diagram and yeah. yeah. It, was two, it was two notches. Well, I had to take it up two notches. They were on the same notch, but the leather stretched differently. Yeah. So, but the fact that that was, that was so cool because, you know, the people on the ground where I ride, nobody even pointed that out to me. No, right. it, it's, and, I, and I said, wow, I felt kind of stupid for not knowing that. But the fact that you could see that and you could critique that. And then when you showed the, and it really has helped me a lot, I have to think about it still, that I tend to lean forward. I tell everybody it's because of physical things, you know, but I tend to lean forward in the trot and the, and the Arabians kind of throw you forward a little bit. So you have to- Arabians really have this like rockety step. They launch when they go. Yeah, I have and a little so Arabian. when you trot, you tend to go forward and then you kind of sit that way so that, you know, and so I have to, I have to think, sit back, but you taught me that. You said you need to sit and you made to, maybe even need to overcorrect a little bit so that you're leaning back at least at the beginning, so that you get your butt bones down where they need to be and you can control the horse that way. And the fact that in within the application that you have, that you can zoom in, you can draw arrows, you can show where my feet are pointed out or in or in the stirrup right or wrong, is actually much better than anything that somebody standing in the middle of the arena yelling at me could tell me because I can't see what they see. But when you have the video, I see what you see. Mm. And so I can, you know, I'll, and I want to say quickly too, because I'm a show jumper and a lot of people who want to do dressage or want to do other things are like, Oh, she's a show jumper. Here's the one thing I think the advantage that being a show jumping coach gives me that other coaches don't have. Um, when I'm coaching high level show jumping students and, and they're doing a combination of a couple of fences, I have to see within a fraction of a second, cause that's how quick it, it takes to jump. I have to see in a fraction of a second, all of the mistakes they're making, not just them, but the horse. So I have to see like the small picture, the big picture, the pictures within the picture, within the picture. And so developing the eye as a show jumping coach, you know, to be able to, hone in on these little tiny details i think it's a, a valuable thing and and so it's very interesting for me to hear you know i i also i agree in the app it's like oh my god such a um it was different when i was in person obviously i'm, I'm i can maybe see things but i think it's a different experience when i can say hey look at you yes those those same show jumpers if you had had that on the app and could actually say this is what i saw yeah, and they yeah. in their mind could say, "Oh my gosh, that's what you meant by this." Exactly, right? Click light bulb. Yep, that's exactly. Oh yeah, right. no, I also, I also agree completely. I'm like, wow, this is. Um, I never would have thought of it had COVID and all this not happened. It kind of forced me into this, but I agree. I'm like, holy moly, I can slow it down to like such a, a thing, like, and overlay the videos on top of each other. Like, there's just so many different things I can do. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm glad that you shared and that. That kind of of precision input mm -hmm. and i see that with other people because i hear ellie saying oh i'm gonna do this now because you showed her where her feet were right or when you know when i hear when anyway i i hear the other people saying the same thing because when you can see what your coach saw mm -hmm. for other people to see the mistakes i made it's now that that's what I look forward to is the feedback. I sent you the other one. It's like, I didn't get an immediate feedback. I'm like, have you looked at me? <laughs> right. Because, because I want, I want that feedback. Uh, and then I take the time in between to think in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, now, what did you say? Okay. Am I actually really leaning back on my feet out? Um, oh, and, and like when I dropped, so I thought I was doing it right. And, and this is, I think Ellie or, um, it could have been Yvette too that said this in online. But one of the cool things is that you you think you know, so you watch all the lessons and you think you know what you're doing. And then you take the video and we send it to you and you're like, yeah, that's not what, the, what we're supposed to do. An example was when you drop the stirrup, then you have to find it again, right? With your foot. And you're like, to me, it made sense what you said. Well, Kathy, you can't keep your foot just 
just pull it out and have it right there so you know you can stick it right back in you gotta like drop it like you really would drop it and then and then search for it so i actually had to find this week i've been working on that because i said oh i guess she's right but i thought we're just taking my foot out i was doing the right thing but the whole point of it is to be able to find it if you really drop it in your writing around so you know, I had to find a way where I have to kind of like kick it a little bit and get it out there so that I can get my foot in. But I had to work on that technique to be able to find the stirrup um, when, when when I didn't just have it pulled out and even enough where I had to shove it back in again. But those are the kind of things that even if you do it wrong, when you send the, the video to you, you can say, OK, that's not quite what I meant by that lesson. This is why and this is yeah. what you have to do. And there was another yeah. student that said that too. And so this is a whole different level. And then the coaching calls, I don't get to be on a lot of them. I'm going to try to be on more, but they mean a lot to me too, because of the things, the topics that are brought up. Uh, one of the topics you brought up recently was that, uh, that I thought was quite interesting is that you could tell that Ellie had a lot of male trainers in the past because of the way she writes. And yeah, she was very mind blown by that concept as well. So she was very like, tell me more. <laughs> I was too. And so what's the need is you're teaching somebody, but it has impact with other people because I've had male tr trainers too. Hmm. And then my first uh, horse trainer, not as much. Ellie's had a lot of, a lot of yeah, uh, yeah, training. Yeah. She showed me. Yeah, and but it was different. Such, I mean, yeah. Male and female, and we ride different. And I've been, actually, it's so funny you said that as we go through the course we will look at people differently that are writing i do all the time now all the time <laughs> i look at other people oh, and i want to i want to tell them hey maybe if you you know you did this but i don't yeah unfortunately <laughs> most people don't appreciate it as much as we think they would but yeah yeah no <laughs> no because they know i'm a beginning writer too but exactly like, oh, my, my husband christian i mean you see him a lot in the videos yes. but he's the same he's like i've only been writing so he's always very nervous when i talk to him to others because he's like no but i'm the the newbie but like when you see him ride and the knowledge he shares no one would would question him yeah no no well you're gaining this basic knowledge of things like mouth so I kind of laughed because I watched when I first joined VIP. I watched, she's a blonde lady. I don't know, Elizabeth maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And she fell off her horse. I day. know, yeah, yeah. So we do yeah, have a he, the, the horse kind of, in a circle. Well, the yeah. horse jumped to the right. We didn't really see the fall, but the horse jumped to the right. And then she came back and said, okay, I had to get back on my horse. And, and it was kind of an unfortunate thing. It, it can happen in those instances. My horse is spooked yeah. like that too. Um, but, and I was listening to her and she kept talking about, oh, I would go back to, I would go back and do some frogs, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know why you would do that in the middle of a lesson. Well, now when I'm going around doing things, if I feel like I'm off my, if I like move forward a little bit and I'm not sitting on my butt, I just pull my legs up and do some little frogs and get yeah. my butt back ratcheted down where it needs to yeah. be. Yeah. And I do what I need to do. So now I'm starting to understand the aspect of why you might want to do a couple of frogs to kind of get your, until you're really good like you are. I mean, obviously you're a professional and you know how to do this, but I just want to say is the, the whole aspect. And then there's another, there's another thing that has happened that is mind blowing to me because I did another thing I wanted to resist doing. So there was the videos and then there was the coffee break, the accountability. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought, Oh, I'm not going to do that part. You know, I'm just going to, and then you kind of pushed it a little bit. You're like, okay, I need somebody to be accountability with this person. And at the time you were trying to hook people up, you were trying to hook four different people up, but it ended up that all four you of us all went together instead of each oh, decided to go I together. You pair off. Yeah. Yeah. It has been absolutely wonderful as a group. And I'm, I'm so glad that we ended up doing that, but we've now reached beyond our 30 days and we've just decided that we're going to still do it. And some people aren't going to do it every day, but we're still going back into the group. There's so much support. There is so much, and it's not just horse stuff because we talk about anything that's in our life yeah. that we need help with, or that it's a challenge or like our health, like our diabetes. When Maria has diabetes and that's a challenge for her and we support each other and we are aware 
when someone's down or not and everybody comes in and kind of gives that support that you need. Mm-hmm. That's another aspect of this program that's um, it's kind of mind blowing to if you, but if you do it, it's it's actually pretty cool. And and I think we'll probably keep doing it because it's just it's just a nice thing to have other horsewomen that are or we don't have any men in our group. So horsewomen that are out there um, struggling that are but but also reaching for the stars. Right. Mm. These are people who want, are trying to do the best for them and their horse. And, and all of them have searched through other trainers, yeah. other methods. Yeah. And we've come and we're at this point now. And I'm still at the beginning of mine. Um, you know, I just I just went for the, the yearly thing with you because I already know this is going to be a years long thing for me. I I love it. I I feel so much improvement in my balance. When just yeah, maybe you I can share my, the story. You you shared a story with me the other day that your horse started cantering. Maybe yeah. you share some of your wins. So my horse just I. So sometimes, and a lot of people talk about this, when you first learn that you need to put your, it's not about the heels down, it's about around the belly. Mm. So when you do that, your horses might think you mean, hey, move forward, because that might be a cue that you've given them in the past. And they're not understanding now what you're doing. And sometimes I think I give some, when I, when I'm trotting, I give that cue when, because I'm trying to keep my legs, you mentioned last week, keep your legs in, don't, don't mm-hmm. leave space, even though you're standing in the stirrups, yeah. Yeah. you still yeah. have to be around the belly. So um, I think when I did that, Monty thought I meant to, to canter. I, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking. And so he just like, whoa. And I was standing in the stirrups and he just moved into the canter and I just sat down and said, okay, we're riding this. We had a wonderful, we did the whole arena. Yeah. at the candor he wasn't mad he wasn't blowing up he wasn't bucking or upset because also i was in the saddle because of the sticky butt i was not because of doing the sitting trot i wasn't bouncing a little bit and that hurts his back he doesn't like it and he lets me know and it was i i felt, I felt like wow I'm doing the very thing that I wasn't think, thinking I could do. Yeah. And um, also, I still, you know, when, when I first saw, like if we, and I'm going to make a video very soon of like a before and after um, when your first quarter is done, but even now, so you're only, you know, as you said, a couple of weeks in the program, cause you're practicing it, you know, an extra week here or there. Um, the first video that you sent me, Monty was, in my opinion, very tense a bit stressed. He was swishing his tail. He looked very like, like he could explode at any moment. And I was a little bit concerned, like, oh my gosh, maybe this is unsafe for you. And now the video you just sent me recently, the other day, he's so relaxed. You're so relaxed. Um, Even a few times he started taking a bit bigger trot steps, as you said, like he's a mover and you just went with it. And he stayed super relaxed. You even kind of used your air brakes and got him to slow a bit. And you just kind of went on with it. And he wasn't swishing his tail. His ears were super relaxed. His face was soft. Um, so for me, it wasn't just you, but like I see him as well. I don't know what you're feeling, but I can definitely see it. Oh, no. Uh, that is absolutely true. And you pointed that out to me too. You said, look at that. He's so relaxed. He's stretching forward. He's moving really out. And I love that because as I said, I was searching for this way with my horses to be connected. This has made a better connection than ever. Um, he it, it has taken a little bit. The air brakes, you know, I, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get him to really to, to stop. But the better I get, the the better I do the frogs and I get my butt in the, in the saddle, the faster he stops. It's so funny. Yeah. So there's certain things that you learn. He almost always stops on a dime now. Only time he doesn't is as always, kind of when he knows he's kind of going back to his stall, I might have to do it a couple of times because he doesn't want to really stop. I want to, I want to head back because I know it's over. All horses are a little bit like that. So we, but we still do that because it's important for him to understand no matter where, where he thinks he's going, we have to stop. So we practice that. But 
Um, he is so much more relaxed. He is, uh, when I put, when I put his bridle on, he actually is reaching for his bridle, right? So for his bit, he's, he's a, a much better attitude about being ridden because I think he knows for, and for right now, we're not doing contact. We're not doing any of the other things that eventually he'll know he's going to have to work a little harder <laughs> than right now. I mean, he does have to work now, but not the same. And once he is brought in and, and as part of the, the picture where he's, I want him to listen more to me a little bit instead of me listening to him, then um, I think he, maybe he won't be, <laughs> he'll understand that it's going to be more work than play. Cause right now it's a lot of, it's not play, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. It's on the, you know, cause I try to do it as much on the buckler with loose, very loose reins as I can. But the, I think the main thing for my horse was taking it. I, he did not like the round pin. Mm. And he would dodge into the middle. He would dodge in. And it was very hard for me to be able to do the exercises. So once I took him to the arena, and I was nervous about that, because in the arena, he can definitely have the big trot, right? Yeah. So, uh, but once I, I took him into the arena, we both decided we were going to do that, both mindset. It, it has worked out really nicely for us. Perfect. To, to oh. do that. But yeah. that's listening to my horse. He didn't like the round pen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I love and, your story and you're uh, very inspirational, especially as I said, like you're you're still in a couple of weeks in, like this is just like the beginning of your journey and you've already blossomed so much. So I'm really um, inspired myself and I hope everyone watching is as well. Um, you know, if anyone who's watching, by the way, if you guys are like, that's it, I, I need to do this too, just comment down below, um, free call. Okay. And I will book a free call with you guys. And that way we can chat and discuss about your journey with your horses. Um, so again, just type free call. I'll send you a message. I'll get in touch. Um, so Kathy, what, what advice would you give to others who are feeling stuck right now, or they're feeling frustrated or they're feeling like, Oh, I'm too old or I'm too this, or I'm too, you know, whatever it is, what advice would you give to them? So the first thing is you have to make a decision. If you're going to stay where you're at or you're going to move on and you kind of push me that i said i'm I, I told you that first time well i'll call you back tomorrow and you're like what's stopping you from the decision i like the fact that you put me on the ground what was stopping me from the decision it was only me my mindset i had to make a decision i needed to move on and i needed to find someone who i thought could do it so you need to make the decision that you really, you, not just that you kind of want to get better, or maybe uh, I want to learn how to canter, or maybe I want to learn how to do dressage. You have to make a decision and commit. And then when you make that decision, and and you pull it, and you get into into the lessons, you have to you have to do it right. This is a, a daily commitment. It's like you're not gonna get better if you're not doing it. And, and so you have to do it. And that, that's, that can be a bit of a challenge for people who are working, people who have jobs and stuff, because there's, you have, you know, you, you need to watch the lessons. You need to listen to the audibles. You need, there's, there's things you need to do, but the more you do those things and you, and you make a plan and, and you make that commitment and do it, the, the better, the, the, the more you're moving forward uh, from, I was really actually after the first lesson, that first video I sent you, I almost said, I'm going to stop. I'm quitting. I don't care how much money I spent. I'm done. Um, and then I said, no, I can't quit without even really trying. This is your first time and you don't know what you're doing. The horse doesn't know what you're doing. And now I am just so happy that I kept working the first couple of weeks through that because it's, it's tough. It's a different way of learning. It's a different thing to do. As you said, especially at first for anybody who thinks they're a writer and then to give that up at first, right? That's, it's tough, but you have to, so commit. And then after you make that commitment and say, yes, I do want to get better. I promise you, I promise you. There are people in my group that are level two dressage 
There's people that are jumping. You know, LA is doing like big jumps already, but they're all learning stuff. And it's so cool to hear them say, this is what I'm learning. And we're learning from each other. So make a commitment. If you want to learn, I don't care what level you're at, you're going to, you are going to learn from this program. There is no doubt. And I am positive that when I get through this first phase and we are working on my stuff that I need to do to, I, I absolutely know now that I'm going to get to the highest levels of dressage if that's what I want. If that's what I want and my horse wants, because I listen to my horse. I know that I could do, I don't even know what they're called, like the pre-St. George or whatever, all that stuff, right? But I want to do the fancy steps. I want to do all the fancy things with my horse because they're so beautiful that everybody's going to look at them and say, wow, I, I really do have beautiful horses. And I, you know, I want them, I want other people to look at the horse and say, that is so cool. Right. And, and to make it be like no effort, I'm working now on just turning without using the range, just my thoughts, my body to, to focus them. So it works pretty much, but all those things so that as you're writing, people are going to wonder how you did it, but not, but and, and because they're not going to see that there's big fights or anything because you're going to be a partner with your horse. And I, I see that I can do that now. I know that. So make the commitment, but after you make the commitment, give it a chance, hmm. work the program because it's not going to work if you don't. Hmm. And I'm just learning the more that I'm working my program, the better my horse gets and the better I get. And really and when you think on. about it, you know, it's pretty insane. You've only been doing this for, I mean, what, a month or a month? Uh, I think five weeks. Yeah, five yeah. weeks, yeah. four weeks. I mean, yeah. I know in the middle of it, you're kind of like, oh my God, I'm the worst rider in the universe. But it's been five weeks, you know, like that's how many years had you been struggling or, you know, how many. Right. And, and the other thing is, this is a cool thing. You have a plan. So I don't go into... So in between my lessons before, I would go out on one day a week, right, and have a lesson. I didn't have like this plan that I had, I was supposed to do in between lessons. I was trying to think back, okay, what'd you say? And I do every day when I go in the, on my horse, I have what I need to do. And then I can take some time for, at the end, I always just take time, some time for us. We just, you know, do some writing for us. But when I go there, I know I've got like this 15, 20 minutes. I got to, I, I, I need to do my, you know, my frogs. I need to do my dogs. I need to do a little bit of yoga. I need to do, and then I've got this thing. I need to stand the up, up, and downs or the down, down, ups or the, so, but I have a plan. How, my whole life, when I would go riding, it was kind of like just, I don't know, just went into the ring and just kind of did things unless I was in a lesson with someone. But now, even in between lessons, I have a plan. Yeah. And that's what moves you forward. Hmm. I so wish that everyone could have heard you. I love when you're saying, like, now you could do as high of level as dressage as you want. Because when you came to me five weeks ago, your goal, and I'll quote you, was I want to do prelim. And now you're like, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. I love how much your mindset has shifted and that you feel there's no ceiling anymore. And that for me is like, that gives me shivers when you said that personally, like that's, whew, that's what I want. <laughs> because we can. Yeah. No, for and sure. And I, you know, and I'm older, so it's going to be harder for me, but, but I'm still pretty flexible. <laughs> I'm still out there doing it with other oh, people. Yeah. And, and there are other older women in our program. And I love that. I love absolutely a new lady from Texas just joined. And um, I have a home in Texas as well. I'm in Arizona. So it's, uh, to me, it's really fun that we have all ages and that we have all levels. We have some people who are already pretty advanced. And um, I, I loved it what Yvette said that she went to her lesson the other day and was just able to, her and her horse both were able to, to do so much better with her trainer, right? With her dressage trainer. And I thought, wow, I, I understand absolutely where she's coming from. Absolutely. So it, it, and people at my stable are like, well, are you going to ride in the dressage test? I said, no, I'm not ready yet. I will when I'm ready. Right. Because it's, be still at the same, it's at the same place where my other trainer was. And I still like that lady. I'm just, she's just not the trainer for me, but I think you are. 
So I'm committed to this. And, and I think I'm just so excited about the whole program. I love the fact that you've got it all laid out step by step, a plan, and then you modify it after we get the basics to each person. And I think that that's just cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, if anyone, if you guys found her story inspiring, like give her some likes and some love, you guys, because <laughs> I find your story so awesome, so inspiring. Um, I don't know, getting people to achieve their dreams, like that's my dream. And I had so many people always telling me like, no, and it couldn't be done. And that, and it like breaks my heart when I heard your story the first time. And I was just like, I'm so excited to see the path that you're on and the transformation you've made so far. And like a year from now, we're going to do another call. Cause I know a year from now, like I can't even imagine. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think the other thing, one more thing. The other thing is it's training your horse. So it's not just training you. And, and I was always afraid that I, I wouldn't be able to train my horse, but now I'm sure with your help that I will be able to train them to do the dressage stuff I need. Oh yeah. Yeah. And especially a, a lot of people have this disbelief, you know, you have Arabians and they have this disbelief like, oh, well, Arabians can't do X, Y, Z. And oh, my goodness. Yes, they can. Uh, my little mare, Lily, she's doing pee off and passage in the field. <laughs> she doesn't know that she's not capable of doing that because she can do it. <laughs> she can do it. I have two yeah. Arabians and they float when they trot. They oh, yeah. have huge trots. Yeah. And yeah. they are going to be marvelous when, mm -hmm. when we get them to that point. And I do have my one, my, my mare is in training because I can only do one horse at a time. I'm working full time. So she's in training with that dressage trainer. Um, and she's young, so she needs it because young Arabians are need to get busy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Get busy. And she's jumping. You saw that picture I, I sent did, you. Yeah. She's little jumps, but still she's, she can do anything. She punches cows. She drives a cart. She can do anything. She's so, they are so smart and so beautiful, but yeah, Arabians, people tell me that all the time, but they also, at my, I just want to say one thing at my stable, they say, your horses are the favorite ones that we take out because they mind, because they mind, because they listen, because I work with them every day both of them on groundwork. And so it doesn't matter how hot your horse is, you can do this program. Yeah. Yeah. No, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So again, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, anyone watching again, if you're like, I'm in it, I want a Mr. Miyagi guru. I want a plan. Just comment down below free call and I'll reach out to you guys. So thank you again so much, Kathy. And yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll see you guys. We'll update soon in the future. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye.